quorum call be lifted. Without objection. Madam President, from the beginning, the story of the U.S. auto industry has been one of ingenuity, of taking risks, and of pushing forward. At the dawn of the 20th century, most Americans could hardly comprehend the idea of the automobile. Yet 20 years later, they had become nearly ubiquitous in American life, thanks to the insistence of entrepreneurs like Henry Ford on making the automobile affordable for the majority of Americans. The democratization of the automobile, rather than the invention of the automobile itself, is, in my opinion, one of the most remarkable and uniquely American success stories. Automobiles allowed Americans to capitalize on the economic dynamism of the Roaring Twenties and helped Americans move and adapt during the Great Depression. They contributed greatly to the American industrial base and the know-how needed to fight and win the Second World War and help propel the United States to its current status as a preeminent global economic and military power. Visionary investments like the interstate highway system made cars a staple in American economic and cultural life. And cars certainly made it a lot easier to get to and from rural America. In a place like rural South Dakota with limited public transportation, the automobile, often a pickup or an SUV, is typically the only way to get around. Madam President, today the automobile industry stands on the brink of a new technological revolution which promises to dramatically transform mobility once again. Over the past three decades, the Internet has transformed our economy and our way of life. And the next generation of the Internet, 5G, which is currently being deployed across the nation, will enable a host of new innovations, including a revolution in vehicle technology, automated vehicles, or what we call AVs. AVs will change the way that we move in numerous ways, making the transportation system safer, more efficient, and more accessible. Individuals whose mobility is currently limited, for example, Americans with disabilities, could gain new independence with the deployment of automated vehicles, allowing them to work or visit friends and family safely and easily. I'm proud that my proposed AV amendment to the Endless Frontier Act was recently endorsed by the National Federation of the Blind, and I ask for unanimous consent that the letter of endorsement be inserted in the record. Without objection. Or imagine a farmer in rural South Dakota who can no longer drive to get to town for appointments, prescriptions, or groceries. Enter the automated vehicle. This technology has the potential to keep people in their homes and communities longer. Moreover, AVs have the potential to greatly increase roadway safety. Currently, there are an average of more than 35,000 traffic fatalities on our nation's roadways each year, including pedestrian, motorcycle, and bicycle fatalities. Automated vehicles could dramatically, dramatically, Madam President, reduce that number. Distracted driving, driving while impaired, automated vehicles could eliminate those dangers. Madam President, for automated vehicle technology to advance, it is imperative that the regulatory framework catch up with private sector innovation. That's why I've pushed for the enactment of AV legislation over the past several years and why I had hoped, I had hoped that we'd be voting to add my automated vehicles amendment to the legislation before the Senate today. I've spent nearly five years, five years, Madam President, working in a bipartisan manner on a legislative to framework to govern the testing and deployment on. of automated vehicles. The amendment I offered to the bill before us today, an amendment that I had hoped to be able to offer with bipartisan support, would have paved the way for expanded testing and deployment of automated vehicles in the United States under the oversight of the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. And let me emphasize that oversight point. My amendment would ensure that automated vehicles would not, not touch pavement without the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration certification that they are at least as safe as a conventional vehicle. The data gathered from the vehicles deployed as a result of this amendment would be crucial to the development of future motor vehicle safety standards for AVs. 
Unfortunately, bipartisan agreement on my amendment collapsed when special interests expressed their opposition despite major efforts to accommodate their concerns. And I am deeply disappointed that once again, Democrats yielded to pressure from special interests against the best interests of our economy and the American people. Advancing AV technology is not just a vehicle safety issue. It's also an issue of U.S. leadership and global competitiveness. Investing in the production of AV technology here in the United States would not only strengthen the resilience of the auto industry, but also the nation's industrial base and, and our national security. The auto industry touches nearly every American state. For example, Horton in Britain, South Dakota, manufactures engine cooling systems, providing steady, good-paying jobs for that community and strengthening the local economy. The same story repeats itself countless times in communities all across the nation. Providing millions of jobs and investing billions annually, the American auto industry is a critical, critical component of the nation's economy. Right now, U.S. companies lead the world in AV technology, but other nations, like China, are seizing upon regulatory inaction and striving to take the lead. If we don't move forward with automated vehicle technology, we will soon see some other nation leading the AV revolution. Madam President, the legislative package before us today is designed to bolster the global competitiveness of the United States. It is pretty difficult to understand why this reasonable and, I might add, no-cost AV amendment, which would lead to untold benefits for our nation's transportation system, does not fit in. How can a bill making strong investments in artificial intelligence, quantum computing, and advanced manufacturing exclude a legislative framework for AVs? Are we really going to back down from leading the world in automotive innovation and technology and see the future of this industry, of this industry, I should say, to nations like China? Will we really ignore the enormous, enormous safety benefits of these vehicles just to suit Democrats' political convenience? Madam President, more than a century ago, when the automobile was invented, there were plenty of skeptics. But America's automobile pioneers did not let that stop them. They seized the moment and pressed forward and ushered in a transportation revolution. We can do that again today. Or, or we concede this moment to nations like China and let the American automobile industry fall permanently behind. That's the choice in front of us, Madam President. I hope we'll choose to seize this moment and pass the legislation we need to usher in another American transportation revolution. Madam President, I yield the floor. I suggest the absence of a quorum. The clerk will call the roll. Ms. Baldwin.